and welcome Dr. Dodds. Hello. We're in Venice filming today and we're going to talk about Nutri-Scan. And as far as I'm aware, Nutri-Scan is for a dog that has allergies, food intolerances. That's can be. Can, can also be, can be for animals that have a family history of that. Okay. And you want to test them before they're sick to see, make sure there's nothing that shows up. Then when you retest them six months or a year later, you can more easily see the difference between the individual animal's first test and second test. But yeah, that's what, as I understood it, so if I was to get a puppy and I would wait till the puppy was maybe six months old yes, and then get a test while the dog is well. Yeah, between six months and a year when they're approaching puberty is the time to do the first test when it's well mm -hmm. to establish a baseline. Okay. Now sometimes things show up then and you find out that the animal was an orphan and had been fed cow's milk most of its life. And so it could again, react to cow's milk. We had a German Shepherd that did just that. Okay, so around about six to eight months. Six to eight months, that's right. That's when we recommend. Mm -hmm. um, and then would you expect to do it again at two years old? You know, a year to a year and a half later, it depends. If the animal starts becoming itchy, mm -hmm or has gastrointestinal problems, and it can be bloat or gas, uh -huh. doesn't have to be diarrhea or constipation, and less likely to be vomiting. But something weird, like when the animal's lying down, you can hear gurgles, you know, tummy yeah. rumblings. I've, I've actually had a few right. people say or this animals to me, yeah, that, my, yeah. my tummy's gurgling, making a lot of... Right, or they, sudden, this an onset they clear of, the yeah. room for the gas that they pass all yeah. the time. So it's showing you there's some imbalance in it. But So it's called the gut-skin connection. Yes. And so yeah. sometimes the problem can be in the bowel but the animal's itching and it isn't noticed that the diet could be the original problem. So what will happen is we'll go on the website mm -hmm. and all the information will be there for you to find out where to order this. But basically this comes in the post. Right and it's free. Uh, There's no charge. Free. Okay the test is not free but this is free to get, Correct. get the test. <laughs> so um, in there we get dental cotton rope. Dental cotton rope. Okay, and little thing here. A special okay. tube. It's a double sleeved tube. Okay. So there's a tube inside the bigger tube. All right, I won't touch it, but I'll look. And the inside tube has a hole in the bottom. It does, yes. So once you've collected the saliva and you cut the wet part of the rope, you don't try to stuff the whole rope in. Yeah, this is, so, so what I'm going to do is going to get, what's it, uh, and that's the instructions in there to tell you the right. thing. So you can also go on the website and it tells you, I always get little instructions how to do it. So what I want to do is to pop that in the side of my dog's mouth. Correct. Up or lower, that, does it make It doesn't matter. And just let them chew on it for about two minutes. But you need to be sure they haven't eaten anything in at least three hours. Mm -hmm. And make sure that they haven't hidden some food in the back, of their, in yeah. the back of their mouth. Yeah. Oh, okay. And sometimes what happens is the animal hasn't been fed for three hours. Somebody walks in the house and the animal is begging mm -hmm. and they give them a treat. Only the person who had not fed them didn't realize it. Yeah. And so you end up with a completely messy test yeah. result. So how long would I put that in for? Two minutes. <laughs> And it should be wet. Yeah. And, and Emma, when it's wet enough, the edge of the rope will sort of bend over a little bit. Okay. It'll sort of be yeah. like a crook. And you cut it, the wet part, and you stick it in the tube. What if I've got a dog that just won't have it? Have you got any suggestions? You know, it's got a very dry mouth. Well, it just won't salivate. They've tried putting acid and dilute acid and it doesn't help. You put something really juicy, like a piece of meat above the animal's nose, Make but don't them. let them eat it. Okay, and then I'm going to put, put it in the tube, put it in. cut it. And I'm gonna cut it, oh I see, so that was, I see, so that's the wet part, Right. cut it, put it, put the lid on. And tape it. Tape it. Because remember when it's sent from wherever, it, in the hold of an airplane, for mm -hmm. example, it could, the pressure could flip off the top. Yeah, yeah. And this, this the, the hole in the bottom is, and there's a little, point on the end of the tube. These are special tubes from Germany, actually. Mm -hmm. And what happens when we get it is we centrifuge the whole tube, and the saliva comes out of the rope, oh. through the hole, into the bottom. 
So a centrifuge is something that spins it's very, spins, very fast. It spins, yeah. And then it, you know, it, it forces... Like the washing machine, when it spins right, really fast... It forces the, the liquid out of the thing down to the bottom. So that's and then we test it. the bottom. I see. Oh. And the saliva is good for 30 days after it's collected. Right. So we have to receive it probably in about 20 days because we want to make sure that we test it within 10. So uh, it, about three weeks they can have yeah. it. I mean, there's no reason for anybody to wait three weeks, but... Maybe the post office will yeah. take a while to yeah, deliver. Yeah, well, that's true, yeah. We get it. We get samples from Australia in 24 hours. We get them from really? New Jersey in six days. Doesn't make Go sense. figure. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so then I send this off. Right. I've on the website. It's very clear to me how to send it. Correct. You know, you, you have to put. Um, if we're sending it from abroad, we have to put that it's... That uh, saliva, non-infectious, uh, for diagnostic purposes only. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. Yeah. It shouldn't be a problem. So then, how long does it take, the golden question? How well, long does it we take used to, to take us f about 14 days because we had to fill a whole plate. These are special custom-ordered uh, kits to do that. It takes 48 samples to make a run. Okay. If we ran a run for 20 samples, it would cost twice as much mm -hmm. because you've used this whole special plate that we had to have ordered and made for us. Yeah. So we wait until we have a full run. We have so many samples coming in now that we run the tests and report results anywhere from five days to maximum 10 days, depending on when the okay. sample. Maybe a sample had come in you know, uh, 10 days before mm -hmm. and the whole thing was finished five days mm -hmm. before and those people are lucky. Or if we just missed a run, you have to wait maybe 10 yeah, days yeah. but if you're right on target then you'll get the results almost instantly and how do i get the results you what get them electronically okay um by email by fax or if you have to by snail mail mm -hmm. or pigeon <laughs> some people yeah or pigeon or <laughs> pony express or yeah, whatever yeah. but and some people don't say they never got their results because they're in spam okay or they're in a junk mail thing i mean we don't have any control no, on that but yeah. if somebody didn't get an answer from us within two weeks they shouldn't wait a month they should let us know because so we're absolutely obsessive about getting yeah, our results very quickly. Yeah, I know you're quickly. very quick. Yeah, I, we I are. know that's, that, that's a fact. And also, so when I get the results, it's going to give me the reading. Right, okay. the number of units per mil. Okay. And the way the test is set up, that you can have a weak reaction or an intermediate reaction, which is like background noise. You know, mm -hmm. every everything test has a background. Yeah. Okay, so if the reading is close to 11.5, let's say it's 11.48. Yeah or 11.5 or higher, it's considered positive for that food. Okay. And there's two different antibodies. There are the secretory one in your saliva, tears, sweat, whatever. Yeah. And then there's the primary immune response, which means that the animal had seen that protein relatively recently within six months. Oh, and so that's where that's the different the readings come from. IgM, yeah. right? IgA is your secretory immunity. IgA, yeah. And that could have been exposed anywhere up to two years before, including now. Okay. So people don't understand the difference. Yeah. And the reason is, is this a primary immune response because the body is saying, forget it already, I don't want this anymore. Yeah, all of a sudden or this have happened. I got a long-term immune response that the body's always been reactive to okay. say, I don't know, a lamb or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that could affect the test, like if the dog was in season, if the dog had recently had a booster? No, or anything nothing. Like that? Nothing should Only affect food. the test. Um, some animals that are on very, very high doses of corticosteroids or other medication for really severe inflammatory bowel disease, mm -hmm. I generally don't want to do any testing when they're in the acute phase of a disease process because yeah. we don't know. Yeah. So we would wait until their maintenance. Maintenance doses of stuff doesn't matter. Okay. But it's just the high, high. we are starting to see animals that have what we call classical leaky gut. Oh, I was going to ask you about this next, and actually. And those yeah. animals have been eating mostly glutens, yes. like wheat or barley or rye or whatever, yeah. or even kamut. And what happens is uh, the glutens have a, um, a protein in them called zonulin. Yes. And zonulin, zonulin yep. specifically causes holes between the cells in the gastrointestinal tract lining. So that allows anything to come in, including toxins, including drugs, including pesticides, God forbid, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so the body is then totally wiped out immunologically, and you can even cause cancer that way. So if you have a truly leaky gut, you can have a reaction to every food that we test because the body just 
everything just everything goes right is, through yeah. into it. So and is the, dysbiosis and leaky gut the same thing? Same thing. Exactly the same thing. Dysbiosis is dis, means abnormal, like yeah. disease, and this happens to be a Y. Yeah. Biosis is the normal biology of the intestinal tract. Dysbiosis means the intestinal tract is screwed up yeah. big time. Yeah. And yeah. so you can imagine it full of holes, yeah. right? And the uh, zonulin makes these holes, and there's all kinds of literature about it on the internet. Yeah. So you're. Uh, I think you sent me something quite recently. Quite yes, recently. I sent you yeah. something yeah. recently, a series of references. Yeah. And one of the people that does the most work in this field is a man named uh, Alessio Fazzano, okay. who's a physician who was at Harvard. He's now in Baltimore. And he's shown how zonulin and glutens relate to autoimmunity, cancer, and chronic disease, especially of memory of the brain. Wow. Why are we doing this to ourselves and our animals? Why? This is just crazy. Does it doesn't make any sense. It, no, it doesn't make any sense at all. This is uh, I'm, the, the, the small amount of literature that I've read read recently that you've sent me. It's just, I don't, I don't yeah. find it. And it's not Why new. Why would you feed? Started in 1996. Okay. Yeah. And the latest reviews are 2012, 2013, and they have whole summary reviews in the international yeah. medical literature. Yeah. And they've studied it in animal models as yeah. well, in rodents and cats and dogs and other species. Yeah. And we see it clinically in pet animals as well. So the point from that is, is you really don't want to be feeding your dogs any glutens. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at, look at Irish setters for years have been known to have what we call wheat sensitive enteropathy. So within certain families of Irish setters, if they eat wheat, they are very sick. What does enteropathy mean? En enter is uh, en enteric. Enter. Okay. Right? Like the yeah. bowel and yeah. pathology is p pathology. Oh, okay. Fine. So wheat sensitive enteropathy. So the bowel lining is destroyed when they ever eat wheat. Samoyeds have it. Soft-coated wheat and terriers have it. Many, many more breeds have it now. Soft-coated wheat and terriers have protein losing enteropathy where the proteins leak out of the bowel yeah. and protein losing nephropathy where the kidneys are damaged the same way, like in lupus. And so the proteins leach out of the kidneys. Yeah. It's a very serious problem in yeah. this breed. So if my dog has a leaky gut, so, mm -hmm. I, so I, I, I do my test, I get the results back. Do you say anything or is it... Do, do we, I there's a, a standard printout. Uh -huh. We do not recommend foods. This is not a, a thing where we're promoting any particular food. Yeah. However, people will write us emails and say, I need help, what do I do now? Mm -hmm. So we have standard comments that say, if all 24 foods are reactive, we suggest you feed um, vegetables and fruit, and we mention which ones. You might- Functional fruit and veg? Fun functional, functional fruit yeah. and vegetables. We'll talk about that You can use uh, tapioca maybe, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is cassava root, mm -hmm. which is a gluten-free starch. Yeah. You may be able to feed emu or quail or pheasant, we don't know. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a thing that if some meat and fish are okay, so the person ha can eat salmon, let's say the dog can eat salmon, yep. but they've, they're feeding a salmon food that's got fish meal in it, which is, could be white. What is fish meal? <laughs> it could be white fish meal or it could, it could be, be shellfish meal. Okay. It could be anything. Yeah. So you can't do that. Right. So it could be salmon meal and salmon oil and then whatever else. Yeah, yeah. So people have to be really careful. You have to be a detective. So what I would do is you, you, I'd get my results back by mm -hmm. probably email, mm -hmm. read it and see. Yeah. What, if you have questions, you send us an email. Send you, send you right. an email and then you come back with. Right. But you're not going to advise, oh, this is the food, this is the diet. You're not going to go through. If people send me a private email and they say, my dog can only eat goat and whatever, mm -hmm. uh, are there any commercial products that make it? I may give them by email privately mm -hmm. several names, but I'm not endorsing that food. I'm just saying this is, Perhaps I you prefer you to, to mm -hmm. cook yourself, mm -hmm. but if you can't, first cook for, the, for, for three, four, five mm -hmm. weeks. And if the animal's good, then you know they can tolerate that. Then you try to find something commercial. It's easier for your family yeah, yeah. to do. If you can't, just cook. Yeah. But you know, we have a great Dane. What are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, exactly. cook yeah. buckets of food yeah, every no, day. Yeah, it's a lot. Well, we have people that do that yeah. because they can't otherwise. Yeah. Um, but because you know. they have to have the ultimate control over what that dog is eating. How long? So, right. if, if your dog has got leaky gut, um, and you you work out exactly what they can and can't eat, and you're working and it's going really well, and you're feeding, say, two protein sources mm -hmm. and lots of it and all the rest of it, how long would it be before you'd want the dog tested again? We would retest the dog in five or six months again. Mm -hmm. Clinically, they can get better in three or four days. Right. It doesn't have to take a long yeah. time. I and mean, we have people that just don't believe it. I mean, they stop feeding chicken, for example, and the dog hasn't had diarrhea when it had it for two years. So. 
Could you reintroduce chicken ever no, again? No, no, never no, 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 never. Okay. Because the animal's reactive to the chicken. So the fact that it didn't react is because the antibody level has cooled down. Yeah. Uh, under the threshold where the body reacts to So you could never, oh, I you see, shouldn't, yeah. No, no, you never can't take again. a chance. Okay. People say, well, I haven't fed chicken for two years. My animal's fine. I'm going to sneak it in again. I said, if, if it was my dog, I wouldn't do it. So they go back straight right, right. away to the same problems again. Mm -hmm. All starts up again. Yep. Well, at least the ones that, it would, it yeah. should. I mean, if, yeah. if you are reacting to peanuts or strawberries or yeah. something, you're going to have that lifelong. It's not going to disappear. That's just, yeah. You're not going to suddenly become tolerant of peanuts. So if your dog has leaky gut, have you, now this is going to probably sound a bit of a silly question maybe to you, have you ruined your dog's immune system? No. You know, by feeding no, no, them no, all no, these no. Silly, the immune, okay. no, no. The, it's a very good question. People say, oh, my, my dog's immune system was ruined because it was over vaccinated and it was this and it was that and it was ever. The immune system has infinite uh, powers to heal. Oh, I love that. It responds and heals and regenerates and corrects itself. It'll have a memory for the vaccinosis, yeah. it'll have a memory for the food, it'll have a memory mm. for the flea and tick product or whatever. Yeah. But it's totally novel. There's so many immune cells that can respond, mm -hmm. immune memory cells that are ready to yeah. respond in a positive yeah. way. So, so we want functional foods that stimulate good genetic expression and don't stimulate harmful genetic expression. We okay. thought cats would be horrible. Yeah. They make so much more saliva than dogs. Yeah. And forget it. They hate it. They just salivate everywhere. <laughs> and the lady says, well, I have a St. Bernard. Do I have to put the rope in his mouth? I said, oh. just go around with a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Collect the saliva and dunk the rope in it. <laughs> All right. So also the other thing is I've got to say this to you. <coughs> Sometimes I'm, I'm, people have said to me, oh, you know, it's quite expensive to do mm -hmm. the test. So from my point of view, because I recommend the test often, and the reason I recommend it often is because, not only because I think it's a really good test, but the main reason is, is because I hear this all the time. People say, oh, I had a blood panel done, then I had this test done, then I had another test done. And then before I know it, they've spent probably $500 in tests. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, if you go and get the one test done, then you know exactly, you're going to get a report exactly what foods your dog... Should or shouldn't eat. Eat, should or shouldn't eat. Within it's, those 24. It's, it's, yeah, it's just... Right. Yeah, definitely. But we have animals that have spent four or five or six thousand dollars that the, the clients have on their pets because nobody knew what was wrong with them. Yeah. And they're about to give up. And yeah. yes, our test is expensive. We spend a lot of time developing it. We have very fancy robotic machines yeah. that cost a fortune from yeah. Switzerland actually yeah. to measure them. Um, we buy our food extracts highly purified by affinity chromatography. That means, you know, on biochemical mo molecular markery. Yeah from Germany because there's they're not clean enough in America. So we get them from me. Germany, we we take them back to America, and then we develop the, the purified antibodies to do the testing, yeah. and then we do the test. And we have to do for, uh, 48 samples at a time, as I mentioned to mm -hmm. you. So the cost of the test is expensive, but it's incredibly expensive to, for us to do it. Yeah, and also as well, it's definitive. This yes, is what, absolutely. This is what your dog cannot eat. Right. So we're talking a lot about dogs, cats, can yeah. cats have this done? Yes, yes. cats so have it done yeah. too, sure. And maybe horses at some point? We hope horses, yes. We're just starting to develop and collect the clinical samples. It was very difficult to get the antigens for horses because we had molasses and molly chop and legumes and pasture grasses, and it varies from summer to winter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we finally got all the antigens collected, and now we're trying to do the trials because we really don't know how well it'll work in the horse. Most horse digestion occurs in the lower gastrointestinal tract. Okay. Not, not in the colon, yeah, lower colon, yeah. not in the upper gastrointestinal tract. Yeah. So the question is, if a horse, and they have a lot of them with chronic bowel problems, by the way, performance horses especially, yeah. um, it, will the antibodies filter up to the top of the gastrointestinal tract? If they won't, we'll have to collect feces from the horses. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave you with that <laughs> one. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, so I just want to ask one other question. Now, if your dog is itching and scratching and it's bald and it's just red raw and your vets put them on steroids and everything, you know, the whole thing. How long can a dog go with being itchy, scratchy in, to this state before you sort of, you, you get to the point where somebody says, you know, enough's enough. That the dog can't cope anymore. What sort of state do you see them in? Do oh, they, they come can. into terrible, terrible states? Oh, people, really people come in there and the veterinarian says, put them to sleep, you're being cruel. No. We've had people that at the last minute were going to put their dog to sleep and they had a vision 
in a dream that night says, don't give up on your dog. And the woman, this particular woman, went on the internet the next day and read about Nutriscan. Oh. She did the test and we saved her dog's life. It was amazing. But remember, the bad skin can be inhalant and contact allergies as well. You know, trees, grasses, weeds, um, herbicides, pesticides, mm -hmm. carpet cleaners, so and sort of issues. thyroid. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Thyroid That's function, very okay, important. So, this is Nutriscan. Um, there's going to be lots of information, as Jean just said, Dr. Dodds said. Please as call me Jean. <laughs> As Dr. Doss said, um, there's lots of information on um, the NutriScan website as well, so you can find out all that information. So, see you next time. Mm -hmm.